I'm Professor Sean Henry from the University of Auckland and I'm Director of Tipunaha Matatini. You know, how are we going to earn our way in the world over, over the next 15 years? Will we continue to be a country that, that's um, focused on dairy exports, you know, a, sort of a, a, a one-track economy? Um, I think some, at the moment something like 22% of our, of our exports um, come from milk powder. Um, and, and, you know, will, will, that, will that continue? Well, you know, my, my guess is no. Um, I think our, our economy will change. If you go back 15 years from now, then, you know, our biggest export was lamb meat. Um, you know, frozen lamb, and and so so it's no doubt that our you know our economy will be different. One of the things I'm concerned about is that is that we stay you know will we stay stuck in this rut of agriculture, uh, and I'm 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 worried that um, that we will, and and I I think that's a, a that's not a very good long term strategy. The analogy I use for that is Detroit, right? Detroit was the was, was the city that dominated automobile manufacture for you know almost a hundred years. Had the three biggest um, car manufacturers in the world based there, so it had all the scale it could want. Uh, but in the long run, right, it's, it's now no longer a place you'd want to live. Right, it, it, it wasn't able to reinvent itself um, when it faced increasing competition from other parts of the world. And I'm worried that that'll happen to us if we if we stay focused on agriculture. Um, you know, the, the, there are. Uh, many countries, many developing countries, uh, that that are also very good at agriculture, um, and they're much larger than us, right? So they can swamp us in, in volume, and I think that's what we've relied on in New Zealand is, is volume, um, and also this premium on our environment. You know, we we have this 100% uh, pure New Zealand uh, uh, brand, um, and and that's you know the the more we intensify um, our agriculture, the more we put that brand at risk and sort of reduce that edge that we might have had that, that, that gave us that, that premium. So I don't think agriculture alone um, is a way that our economy, um, we, you know, we can't let it just develop in that direction. But getting out of that is quite hard. You know, we rely a lot on market forces. Um, and, and of course the market tells us, well, yes, we want your um, dairy products, right? We're, we're earning good money for it. Um, and so the, so the market is, is, is pushing it so that, in that direction. So I actually think we, we do need to come up with a strategy that shifts us away from that. You know, that doesn't mean stopping dairy farming or, or, or stopping the agricultural sector, but it does mean that, you know, maybe we need to put some effort into developing other areas. I, I do think that high technology um, and niche high technologies are, are the way to go. You know, you can, we can see that technology is becoming more and more important in our lives. Um, and there are many countries that now make their living um, essentially selling um, high technology products. You know, a country, I look to a country like Denmark, which again, 15 years ago, Denmark's uh, biggest export was Danish bacon, um, and it's now, it's now pharmaceuticals. And so they've really shifted their economy um, from an agricultural base through to a technology science focused base. And I think we can do that here in New Zealand. There's a, there's a couple of things. We do, we do have to spend more on, on um, science and innovation. It's something that we've, we've just you know, we've not invested in over a very long period of time. I think our, our government puts um, about two thirds of what other OECD countries uh, do into, into science and innovation. And our business sector, um, it's something like a third um, of what, what other um, business sectors in other OECD countries spend on, on, on R&D. And so we've really, we've really got to change our mindset there and we do have to start spending on research and development. We need to develop a, a, a workforce that, that is skilled in these areas that, that can go on and work in these high tech companies and can generate new ideas. Um, that's a big thing. And we also have to, we have to learn to work together. That's one of the things that comes out very strongly from my research um, is that actually, you know, science innovation these days is a very collaborative exercise. Um, it involves putting large teams together. You know, people don't invent products um, very often in their, in their bedrooms or garages anymore, right? A lot, a lot, of, a lot of the high tech products um, come from uh, from large groups of people working together in, in, in teams, and I'd like us to be known as a, as a smart country, right? So, so of course we know that we put a lot of smarts into our agriculture, but we don't we don't often sell it that way. Um, uh, or our you know again our movie industry, you know the, I just watched the Air New Zealand ad on the plane coming down, and it you know it, it portrays us as a, a rather quaint place to come visit, but of course there's a huge amount of, of science and, and technology that's gone into making those movies and, and somehow we don't, you know, we're almost afraid to convey that to the rest of the world. We'd much, much rather sell ourselves as the sort of quaint 
out of the way place um, where a nothing backward. a bit backward with, <laughs> where, where no, nothing much happens mm. and so I think we have to get over that kind of mindset and really start start explaining to the rest of the world that actually we're, we're, we're smart um, and we can do clever things um, and, and, and you know change that perception of ourselves because you know in a way the things we tell the tell the world are the things we in the end we believe about ourselves um, and so if we're constantly selling this message of the farm um, and the sort of the backwater, a nice quiet backwater where you can buy, you know, buy some, some cheap waterfront property and retire to, um, then that's what, you know, we're going to believe that ourselves.